We hate being tied down, cell phone contracts, debt obligations, and for the musicians, teethered to the in-ear monitoring station with their confounded headphone cable. This is where today's product comes in, wireless in-ear monitors from Kimafun, and we'll be reviewing them coming up. In-ear monitoring has changed the game for worship teams, replacing old-school wedges with isolated headphone mixers. But for those of us who played live before IEM systems, we remember the freedom of motion that wedge monitoring provided. We could run around the stage and interact with our other band members. With IEM stations, we're like Evangelion units, tethered and confined to an area for as long as our headphone extension cables allow and inoperable beyond their physical limitation. Going wireless with in-ear monitoring is going to be the next frontier. Personally, I think for a successful and pleasant wireless IEM experience, there are two requirements. First and foremost, no audio dropout, interference or lag. And secondly, true stereo imaging without phase issues. Introducing the Kimafun Wireless In-Ear Monitoring System. It adopts 2.4 GHz wireless transmission, which is the same technology in other wireless units like those for guitar, including the GTAT integrated into my Pod Go. 2.4 GHz will be an important consideration, so keep that in mind. It has six inbuilt channels that are easily selectable with a big middle button to deconflict equipment interference. All you need to do is to have both the transmitter and receiver set to the same channel for automatic pairing. Kimafun's documentation says that multiple receivers can connect to the same transmitter as long as they are on the same channel, which is a big bonus for churches looking to save on an IEM setup. The carrying case is sturdy and contains many adapter cables to suit a variety of applications. In a world where I'm used to Apple charging extra for accessories, this is a nice touch. Full disclosure, today's video is a sponsored post in that Kimafun did send this set to me for review, which includes one transmitter, one receiver, and the in-ear monitoring earphones. They didn't pay me or have inputs, no pun intended, in the review process, but I do get to keep the set. Kimafun, thank you for making this video possible. Let's devise a test kit and test scenario so that we can see if the Kimafun meets the two requirements as earlier stated no dropout, interference, or lag, and true stereo imaging. Obviously, the truest test would be to play this in a live environment at the Sunday service, but as I don't surf all the time and my next session was going to be quite far down the line, I needed to get creative with home testing. I'll record that Sunday service in a separate review video. Why would you use a wireless IEM system at home? Stick around to the demo section and I'll let my daughter demonstrate a use case scenario. The following test kit will provide some stress testing as to whether the Kimafun can operate with multiple 2.4 GHz transmission devices nearby. Buy. The transmitter is going to be connected to my Part Go wireless headphone output. I'll have stereo effects dialed in and use a stereo backing track. Any mono summing or phase issues will become evident as soon as I hit the play button on the track. The receiver is going to have a splitter at the headphone port side with one end going to the IEM and to my ears and the other end feeding a Rode Wireless Go transmitter. On the camera side, with a Rode Wireless Go receiver, we'll be able to hear what I hear in my ears. This test kit can hopefully also stress test 2.4 GHz transmission since the Pod Go Wireless and the Rode Wireless Go also transmit and receive at 2.4 GHz. Additionally, I live in a HDB flat with competing Wi-Fi signals from homes above and below me, so that might add to a stress test environment.
intro. Two, We're going three, to be using four. the recording I just made with my Telecaster. Here I've set the transmitter on the table which currently has an unobstructed line of sight with the receiver. I'm going to pick it up, put the test kit in my pocket together with my phone and walk down my corridor. So far, with the phone and the road wireless go transmitted together, there's no dropout. And there's my helper tending to Claire and her dinner. Aha, the Three, first dropout has occurred. Three, four. My dining area is quite the Wi-Fi dead spot for some reason. I was anticipating that there could be a problem walking here, but I was hanging on to hope that the Kima Fun might pull through. Right around the spot is where the home router is. Positionally, I'm about 50 feet away and around the corner that's obstructing the clear line of sight with the transmitter. Complete dropout. Let's try walking back to regain connection. Now that I've finished home testing, here are my results and observations. These wireless IEMs passed the two test criteria to a point. Firstly, there was no perceptible audio lag or dropout despite a congested 2.4 GHz signal environment at my work desk. Granted, this was a home test, so it remains to be seen how much it works in a church environment where everyone in the congregation has a cell phone. However, as soon as I tried walking away from the transmitter beyond direct line of sight, I ran into issues. This was made worse when I stood next to my home router. So it seems that dropouts do occur under the following conditions. Obstructions and corners, meaning you should have direct line of sight between the transmitter and receiver, and heavy 2.4 GHz congestion. All that being said, I think if I set a transmitter and receiver close by at the IEM station, there shouldn't be dropout issues. Just don't expect to run around the sanctuary like Bono does at a U2 concert. Secondly, the tone was preserved in glorious stereo. No mono summing, no phase issues, and it sounded exactly the same as plugging the IEMs directly. Now that's quality for you. Kima Fun, you've got a winner product here. The other potential issue I have with this design is on the transmitter side where the stereo 8 inch plug is a protrusion. There's no cap to protect it, so to be on the safe side, you have to use the carrying case which adds to setup bulk. And that's me. What about you? What other wireless IEM brands have you tried? Or do you think going wireless is too much of a hassle? Any wireless IEM horror stories? Comment below. That's it for me. Thanks for watching this video. Here on my channel, I'm committed to helping you get the best tone out of your gear, as well as playing your best for the Sunday service. If you're a worship musician on the same journey, consider liking, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and sharing this video with someone whom you know could benefit. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'm all about worship guitar.